All right. <clears throat> Excuse my shitty voice as normal. I haven't been up all that long and I haven't been talking that long either, so I think I've been up for like an hour. And you know, allergy through and all, so yay. Um, so I got my yarn today, you guys. Yay! My dad called the post office because we hadn't been getting any mail delivered in a week. And they're like, oh, someone put a hold on your mail. Or they're like, you put a hold on your mail. And we're like, no, we didn't. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll remove it. Russell was pissed. And uh, he went down there and he's like, hey, my wife's stuff that she ordered said this. And we didn't put that hold on there. How did it get on there? And they're like, well, you know, for example, if recycling was being delivered and the mail carrier didn't want to wait for the truck to get out of the way, they could have just marked it as um, not able to access the mailbox and um, would remove it the next day except the guy that's been doing our run for the past few weeks is not the normal guy we have. Our normal guy has been out for surgery, apparently, and this dude never removed the hold, and so we weren't getting any mail to the house. The yarn came today, though, after they uh, removed the hold, so yay. But yeah, w there was definitely fuckery afoot of some description. So, um, today we're starting a new project since we finished the Flamingo Boy yesterday. His photo is up on Insta and Kofi and my Twitter, and I think that's all the places it needs to go. Sorry about the audio from Friday from the Planet Zoo stream. I did not realize that the mic was not picking up. Thank you, Windows Update, for undoing all of my settings. You are fabulous. Um, it, it was working on Thursday, so it must have been Thursday night, Friday morning when I did the Windows update. And the past few, it didn't fuck with my mic, so I didn't think to double check, but, you know, it is what it is. And, um, it seems to be working now. I can see the bar moving, so yay. Um, and apologies for the first part of the stream yesterday, because I didn't know it wasn't working until Zort said something in chat, and he's like, I can't hear you. And I'm like... He's like, are you muted? And I'm like, not on purpose. He's <laughs> like, damn it. Um, but yeah, so that, that whole thing, it happens, you know, what can you do? So today we are starting a new needle felting project, um, or we're picking up with our, our, our previous project where, um, we're felting along with a season of, um, Joy of Painting tutorials from Bob Ross. So, um, today we're going to be starting Season 3, Episode 3, called Bubbling Stream. Um, we have a lovely bright yellow friend here, actually. I need to move that because we need this flat for this. So, I wasn't sure what we were going to do size-wise. As everything is in the way so I mean if we come in here so like 10 inches is here but we probably do 11 or we can do like, I don't think we can do um, the size I was originally thinking. Like we could probably pull off like a six by six, but that's like a really funky size. So like this is just, just no, it's not even. It's a little short on the 8 inches across. So, 
we'd have the thing where we'd have to be like right up on the edge again. And I guess that's not terrible. But, um, so we can't like do eight by eight, which I think might be a little bit more, um, normal. Uh, I'm trying to think in size of like picture frame sizes. Um, six by six isn't all, sorry, my T-score keeps hitting my bottle of water and it's pissing me off. So six would be, I mean, that's not very big, six by six. So, you know, feels kind of small. So I guess we'll just do our um, eight by 10. Um, so if we come in an inch here, thing looks crooked. Probably because it is. Alright, so ten is here, but if we take it uh, alright, um We say here and then here. So approximately, because our felt's not quite. the size that it's supposed to be. Like the felt I think was supposed to be 9 by 12. So it's a little, a little off. Right, so there's one side. And we'll get the other here. And this feels about the, um, about the the edge extra roughly I mean it's gonna be a little <coughs> excuse me it's gonna be a little wobbly to a degree anyhow so there's our sides and then you know like I was saying like eight is like off the edge so It'll kind of be like a situation with the last one where we just have to make sure that, um, that we get that in. Because if we went, like, if we flip this over, excuse the fuzz that this has picked up. So if we went, um, like even if we went five by seven, that's really small. Like if we go So what would it be? Um be five across. So I mean five would be here. Let me grab my pen real quick. So if we five there and then like five by seven is pretty small. I mean, it would definitely be smaller than 6 by 6, so I think we'll just go with the 
the 10 by 7 and like a fraction of an inch short of 8. So, I mean, you're probably going to mat these things anyway. Or you'll get a chunky frame. And by chunky frame, I mean that it has like wide things. So, like, it'll hold an 8 by 10, but the opening's actually smaller. Or you can go like, you know what I mean, right? So. Or you can take it to your custom framer that you trust and be like, hey, I want to frame this. Do it. <laughs> and let them figure it the fuck out. That's always an option, right? Alright. Tutorial Bob. You are just a little bit in the way here. Okay, so Tutorial Bob's real tiny down there because I don't want to get in trouble. He is muted as well. So if you would like to watch the tutorial for this in full on your own, you can find it on the Bob Ross to, uh, YouTube channel. And um, there is the link to that. Now, um, we are going to do a little bit into this, not far. But um, we are going to see how things go. Now, um, it is a, a bit of a stream. I did watch this um, a couple of nights ago just to try to wrap my head around it. Um, now, I think he's going into phthalo blue. So it, it's a bright blue. It, it's not toned down or anything so I was trying to work the colors out with a, a colored pencil sketch I was doing and he doesn't come down very far at all on this it, it's almost in an arc um, not quite but a little bit like ever so subtly because he ends up hiding a lot of this sky so I kind of need to see. Now see, he just like grabs a whole bunch of dark colors and I don't know what I'm going to do about this because um, the sky color is fine. I have that picked out, but it's a interesting blend of dark colors to make like this weird reddish brown. and. The closest thing I have to that is like this camel color, especially when it starts to get lighter towards the bottom. And see, he's got a very high horizon line on this. So I might actually need to grab the ruler back again. Excuse me. And yeah, see, I just, I don't know how we're going to approach that part yet. Um, it, it's definitely only maybe a third of the way down in, in the blue, because then he starts, um, this color is, is very heavily predominant. Which is why I was originally thinking, oh, I'll just use one of the little roving balls that I have. Um, but because this color is so damn dominant, I don't know if I can get away with it. Um, and I think the, the quote unquote close to Van Dyke brown color that I have, it's a chocolate brown. I think that's too dark to be the entire base, but see, then he comes in specifically and lightens this color just a bit, and then he starts putting tree trunks in, so I'm like, well, how's that going to work if I use 
the um, the camel color because the camel color looks more more like our trees. Now I could gray the trunks. That is a very distinct possibility. We could do that. Um, instead of making them more brown, I've I've got some grays gray shades that we can do um, that would probably work in here because I just think that our camel color if we use that in the background might become a problem um, it's either that or we just go with like the hunter green and just stick that um, behind and then come back in with our other shades and try to um, do something with it because the way he highlights this stuff um, like you see a little bit of it underneath but part of this is, is that we have to try to tailor what he's doing to what we can do with this. Um, oh, I'm glad I picked up that yellow. So, it's like we could just, I mean, this feels more fall than anything. So we might, we might do the camel in the background for the trees and just make it wispy and then the trunks will do solid. That's also a distinct possibility. Um, but since my other yarn colors came, I'll be able to fluff one of those and um, we can probably use a little bit of the yellow that I picked up. I mean, we have like a gold yellow and a mustard, and they're similar tones in the stuff I already have. And then he's just going to keep on going. So let's back it up here. And we'll take the, the trees off. What was that? Why am I being a little freak? You already know that? She's been being a gargoyle up on top of the crab tank. Or something, or something spooked her. I don't know what. Alright. So I am going to grab the ruler again just so I don't fuck this up terribly. Alright. Now, um, it's not going to be a precise measurement. Let me move the pad so that we can actually draw here and our towel, our painting towel can get stuck over there too. Um, I'm just looking for a semi straight line because me and lines can't even draw a straight one with a damn ruler. All right, not even with a damn T square. Um, all right, so it comes down to about about a third, right? So. Where would we say that third line comes in? Maybe here? Maybe? So that's a third. Okay, we're gonna say approximately. there. And I'm doing this because I can never draw anything straight. And plus we're drawing on felt so it's going to get a little wobbly on top of that. And then dealing with the fiber, it's going to make things even more interesting. So, oh, paint towel, I don't need you today, I'm sorry. Ah uh, yes, our felt mat. 
our felting felt map it has picked up all of the glorious colors of past projects so since he's using that that bright in your face phalo blue um i don't necessarily have a phalo blue and the colors that he puts on there are being um, manipulated by the um the the liquid white that he has on there so it's going to lighten them a little bit because you see how dark and bright it is in your face um on the palette but when it hits that white film that he's got on there it just it it changes it it lightens it so i think um i think we'll go with uh corn flour in a uh, big twist and um i did get some paint box was the other yarn i picked up so we'll see how that fluffs i've not used that before I'll probably use the um, I'll probably use the paint box stuff for the needle needle for the felt yarn prep yarn fluffing video that I'm still need to do for you guys. I just haven't had the time to get around to doing it, um, but we will work on getting that done. So safety first. Get your finger doodles on and I don't think I it's crooked even with a t-square I can't draw a straight line or it looks crooked to me so we'll put our protectors on we'll get our needle in the handle situated all right so we're gonna get some fluff and sorry, I have this kind of pulled to me as I often do. And then we're like half out of frame, but the bottom half we don't have to worry about right now, anyhow. We're more worried about the top. All right. So I tend to grab smaller chunks of this at a time. It probably does slow me down a little bit, but that's okay. So my biggest concern at the moment <laughs> is with the yellow, is this going to look green? I don't think it will. I think we'll be all right. So I'm actually going to start at the horizon line this time. And kind of work my way up here. So I'm gonna try to gather some of this around the needle or grab the use the needle and like kind of grab it a little bit and bring it over to our edge line and then sink down and don't push in and drag because then you will bend your needle I think this needle might be slightly bent but I mean that's only if you want to make sure that your edge is um, as close to straight as possible we we're we're gonna get it a little wonky anyway and we're gonna have to to trim up that edge so i'm not gonna get too fussed over that but um i do want to make sure that i can see my edge now see, this does get a lot darker when you start um, felting it. It starts to take on more of its original shading before you fluffed it. Because we're putting all those fibers smushed back down together. Um, let me... see about coming in a little bit closer. All right, I'm not gonna pull that up yet, even though I really, 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 really want to. We're gonna keep going. Once we get this, um, this bit of fluff 
uh, stabbed through the felt, we'll go ahead and pull that up and just make sure that we're not getting too, too scrunched in. I mean, you can see on the side where the felt's pulling, and that's going to happen. That's why I say approximate on the sizes on the Etsy shop, because once you start doing this, even the size that we measured, the sides that we measured out, um, aren't exactly dead on. And you know, we'll have to probably add a few layers of this color as we get it laid down in spots that look a little thin, or if it looks like the yellow's shining through a little too much. It, it's just a thing, it just, it happens. Um, if you're looking to have this done quickly, I really don't think this is something you can do very quickly. Or at least I can't. I'm using a small gauge needle too, by the way, so I don't know if that's making things go slower, but I prefer this one. It's lighter um, than like the multi needle handles so my arm doesn't get as tired as quickly. It's just going to be something to keep doing here. So since we've added in a second um, art stream day, <coughs> excuse me, um, we will probably get through this one a little bit faster. since we'll have an extra day to work on it. Okay, so there are some thin spots where you can see the yellow peeking through. I'm probably gonna try to worry about that once we get everything situated. So there, yeah, you can see the, um, this is all from the needle, like the little barbed uh, notches in the needle. Um, going through the felts and stabbing the fiber through and um, making it become one with it. it tends to get mashed down a little bit and you can see some of the, the yellow felt fibers in there as well but it tends to get a little bit mushed and flattened as I go along because of how I do things I tend to keep pulling up and I tend to flatten out the back and smooth it out a little bit as I go just to keep too many dips and valleys from uh, from becoming an issue. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to try to get this horizon um tagged in here first and then I'm going to work up to the edge this time. So I'm doing it a little different than I have in the past where I've started in the corner and uh, worked my way down. It's just how I'm doing it today. It's just the, the mood I happen to be in. Sorry, I'm just kind of grabbing, I'm not really grabbing, I'm just kind of using the needle just to kind of nudge the fiber up a little bit just so I can see where my line hypothetically should be. I'm just trying to keep that close to it. I know it's probably not going to be dead on or, you know, 100% straight but we're gonna have our trees and stuff. Um, but it seemed like the trees started like about here and then came up over it. 
Like that one top of the tree was almost up to here, so. And I know this is sitting a little bit crooked on the mat here. And that's okay. But I am now aware that I did that, but it shouldn't make um, too much of a difference. Oh, we're out of practice needle felting my arms. My arms feeling it. Feel the burn, you guys. Feel the burn. Good arm workout. At least for one of your arms. I guess. So I am still, I'm trying to find time to get that video edited. Um, I'm working on the fifth live stream, editing that down now. Don't know if I'm going to have time to work on that this week. Um, I've been swamped already with with um, with work, so, um, so my migraine came back on Saturday night when I was trying to do post-production stuff for the podcast, and I barely got through that before my brain was just like, no, we're going to go lay down. So. <laughs> Um, I didn't get all of what I needed to get done Saturday night, so then I had to spend last night doing that and trying to catch up some house chores and then making dinner after the art stream. And I think by the time I got dinner, it was like 9.30 last night. Just the way things worked out, because dishes needed doing and I was waiting to um, get to the oven anyway to make my dinner, but um, it gave me a chance to get dishes caught up, or semi caught up. I didn't get them all finished, but at least I got us some silverware, so <laughs> got that done. I had a write-up I had to do. I had some promos I had to schedule, and by the time I got that done, I actually have another write-up I have to do. I was planning on trying to get that done last night so that I could just focus on the art stream dinner and then stream prep for Thursday tonight. And um, by the time I got the other stuff done and the other write-up, it was like 2.30 and I was like, I am tired and the cat is giving me shit. I don't know if she was mad because the water bowl had um, completely been drained but she leads with her face whenever she's mad and she meowed at me and she's in the corner like half behind my chair so I'm trying to reach down to pet her and I just started to, to touch her her head and she's like leading in with her face going after my palm she actually um, she got me pretty good like right in here that was a teeth scrape I was like, girl, what did I do? What is your problem? Why are you mad? What is the matter? So I went out, checked the food. There was still some food in there. I added a little bit more and then I realized that the water bowl was empty and she didn't follow me immediately out there. So I wasn't really convinced that um, food was what the problem was. And um, I'm like, well, what is your deal? And so then I was like, oh, we need water in here. So I took care of that. I think she wanted me to go to bed, to be perfectly honest. Because after I put the water in the bowl, and she knew I was mad at her because she bit me. Um, she came back a few minutes later after I threw her one of her toys because then I was like well does she want to play like I don't know what the fuck she wants um and I was in the middle of trying to finish up this this article for the website and she comes back in and I have a a little table that used to be like a tiny bedside table but it was rickety so we cut the legs down and now it's like a, a platform that I can put my feet on under my desk she 
comes in, stands on that, and then the next thing I know, I've got this cat head poking up underneath of my keyboard tray in my lap, and I'm like, what? And she's like meowing and rubbing her head all over me. And I'm like, what? And then I was like, wait, do you want me to go to bed? Because she's been sleeping on the bed, not on me, and not next, like right up next to me touching me, but near me. And um, I was like, kitty, I've got to finish this work. I have to get this done. This needs to be done. I have other things I have to do tomorrow night. So I have to finish this. I can't just not finish it. I was like, you've got to give me like a half an hour to finish doing what I need to do before I can go to bed. And then she kind of looked at me kind of gave me a disgusted sigh and then walked and hopped up on the end of the bed and curled up. So I'm like, really? Was it that you wanted me to go to bed this whole time? She's turning into the dogs. Momo used to do that to me. He would just lay there on the bed gurring at me. Like, not, not full on growling, but these tiny little baby gurs to get my attention. Um, when Russell would work overnight and... I'd be the only one up and I'm like, I'm not taking you out to pee because they were still in like puppy stage at like two in the morning alone in the dark because it's dark as hell out there. And I'm like, no, even if, even with my flashlight, I'm still a bit freaked out about it because it's, you know, we, we're, we're not full on sticks, roar, 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 oh God, not, we're not full on sticks, rural. That was really hard to get out. But, um, it, it is still a little bit country. And there is still some wildlife that roams around. Somebody saw a bear hanging around, um, not too far from here. And, um, like a week or so ago. So, I mean, and then there was times where there was, um a family of black bears transiting through one day in broad daylight um like a couple streets over and i'm like mm, okay so um didn't really want to be out there in the dark with them and couldn't figure out what the hell he wanted and then i finally realized he wanted me to go to bed i was like really i don't know if the light being on was bothering him or if he just wanted cuddles but he was mad that I was not in bed. I was like, okay, buddy. So, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is just something that I do. Just trying to re-stretch out the back just to get it from being too bunchy. don't know if I'm going to have to fluff more of this color to get through this project. It depends on how persistent the yellow is and um, how much we need to um, cover up any holes that are shining through here. <coughs> Again, apologies for the allergy throat. I'll tell you, apparently today was first day of school for a lot of kids here, and that blows my mind because in the area we were in in South Jersey, school didn't start till um, like Labor Day weekend week. Like it was Labor Day weekend, and then like that next day or Tuesday or whatever of that week is when school started. So when we first moved down here and we saw that school was starting in the middle of August, we were like, what? What is this bullshit? <laughs> so I'm like, I hope the schools have air conditioning. 
because it was pretty pretty icky out. Russell um, had to run to the store earlier and uh, he was pretty sweltering by the time he got back. You shut the trunk in and everything on the uh -huh. car, right? Okay. Because your hands were loaded down when you came in. So I had to take my mom to the store. And he was pretty much fried by the time he came back in. Because it was so hot. And so you can see how this is like shrinking in. It's from this going through the fiber and everything pulling down. Which is why when I pull it up, I just kind of run either my pencil sharpener or an old dental floss container or even the handle of this carefully because the needle will then be putting at our face. I don't recommend doing that. Um, just to re-smooth everything out on the back side. Just so relieved that the yarn showed up today and that we got the whole mail delivery debacle figured out and, and dealt with because it was becoming a humongous source of anxiety for me. And now we have our pretty sunset colors and then we can work on doing the sunset or we can work on doing some of our our uh, reference photos that I've been saving on Unsplash. So if you're not familiar with Unsplash, it's um, basically a royalty free website that has uh, photos on it that um, you can use. You can, I mean, they prefer that you give credit to the artists if you use them, but you don't have to, I think. But um, you can kind of do whatever you want with them. Now there is another section that has iStock photos on there. Those you have to pay for. Um, but the other ones are free. And if you make an account, which you can do for free, this is not sponsored by the way. I'm just letting you guys know. Um, you can make an account for free on there and then when you do that, you can make collections, like little photo albums that you can save these photos that you like too, so you can split them into like, oh, flowers or um, or a specific animal, like cats or beach or whatever. Like you can name your own collection things of stuff that you have favorited and that way it's all nice and organized and saved that way and then you can just go back into your profile and look at your collections if you're trying to find something that you had saved previously. And then you can uh, just, you know, do you can download them from there. I've used a couple things from there for background header photos on the website so sometimes you'll see the the credit at the bottom of the page for if I've used images from Wildhead or you know when I use the stuff from Unsplash I will grab the link that pops up when you download the photo and um, I'll stick that down there so other people can go and find it on the unsplashed website. So we do have some thin spots we will have to come back in over here. I mean, that's a given. I knew that was going to happen. But in the meantime, I'm just trying to make sure we don't have any loose guys fussing about here. And making sure everything is all fairly secure. I keep looking at this and I keep wanting to scratch it off and I keep forgetting that no that was pen. I have to keep reminding myself. No, remember we were considering doing a slightly smaller size but 
See, it's kind of funny because the back side looks a little bit green from the blue. Um, mixing in with the, the yellow. Just gonna get our fluffy stuff here. And I try to make like little little snakes. You know how you would make snakes with clay. That's all this is. Just kinda gets the fibers a little bit more bunched up. I keep like taking this to the edge before I'm realizing that I don't need to be on the edge, like the edge of the felting mat. I'm like, oh, the edges need to be lined up, and I'm like, wait, what? No, they don't. Not when we're working in a specific spot here. All right, and then we'll just start working our way up to the edge. I'll fill in our our um, thin spots once we get everything covered over here. Make sure that we've got a fairly decent coverage before we come back and worry about all of that. So this is probably a little bit thick, but probably save us from having to come back in and do too much fixing of the yellow poking through. So yellow just happened to be the next color in the stack of the multicolor pack of felt that I grabbed. Didn't really pick it for any specific reason. might be better to go with like a more neutral color or um, or maybe a blue up to you but this way I can see if I've missed any spots in this upper section here And it's working pretty good. I mean, the orange one was a little obnoxious when we were doing the night scene on it, but in the end, it uh, ended up working out pretty good. So like I was saying before, this isn't a slow process, or this isn't a uh, fast process, it is a slow process. So, if you're expecting like a finished piece in like an hour max, um, you definitely want to go much, much smaller. And even then, I don't think you'd have a finished piece in an hour. Like, we could have gone smaller, but I think it's easier to go smaller. Um, in paint. I have a hard time working small with this stuff, but that's just me. I feel like my fingers get in the way. Even though I am trying to keep my my hand out of it today.
Whew, my arm's getting tired already and we've barely gotten started. That's not good. Probably because we're doing bigger chunks. When I did the smaller chunks, you know, we'd have a more of a break in between. Like I can see some spots in here where these two sections met where we'll have to add in a bit more. color and stuff, but that's fine. <laughs> We've, we're adding the yellow, the, um, the yellow felt to our, our pad now. Okay. So I'm gonna grab this guy. Try to grab a smaller section here. Okay. Well, I mean, do we want to just keep going across and then go up to the edge, maybe? Maybe that would be a little bit better. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Hope the start of your week is gonna be pretty good. I know not everybody has a traditional work week. I don't even know if there really is a traditional work week anymore. I mean, Honestly, I think as time's gone on, the whole, at least as far as retail is concerned, the whole 9 to 5 thing is a bit of a unicorn. I mean, I think some people still have like a similar thing. Maybe it's eight to four. I don't know, I did do nine to five for a little while when I was merchandising. But then again, there were plenty of times where there were special events or sales going on and days where I was doing 10 hours when they were okay with overtime happening, which wasn't often. And then, you know, Black Friday weekend. I was never much one to go out shopping on Black Friday weekend anyway, because I just the, the crowds were just a bit ridiculous for me and like people getting into fistfights over two dollars off a sweater and it was, I'm like look at the price look at the regular price like compare the sale price to the regular price you all are fighting over a two dollar sweater it's not like it's a free sweater and even then that's a little much but like stop it it's a sweater just stop so I would always do my holiday shopping either online when possible because I just couldn't handle that shit or I would try to go to the mall in like off hours meaning like non-peak shopping time so I would try to go like during the week like early in the morning if at all possible because the mall was a scary place at the time before the internet really got going. <clears throat> I 
especially around holiday season. Sometimes I would try to go other places to avoid them all. I'd try to go to the little, like, old-timey shop feel place, um, Smithville up in South Jersey. They had some unique shops up there. So I don't think many people thought to go up there, so you could get some, some cute stuff. I mean, it was a little more expensive, but... avoided a trip to the mall. <laughs> or I would try to stick to the outlying shopping centers around the mall. If at all possible. So yeah, we'll definitely have some sections that we have to come back in and fill. And I know this, I see them. I just want to work on getting our base color down here first. So I think before I would try to fill them in and then as I was going they were reopening and so that was kind of like why? So I think now we'll just we'll fill it in and then we'll come back and then start to fill in the gaps after we've got the main large base section done. just to do it a little bit different this time. So I've got goals I need to, of stuff I need to get to, uh, dealt with tonight. We'll see if that happens. I didn't get all of my, my goals done last night. I was thinking I was going to have time to do stream prep last night, and I didn't. By the time I was even remotely okay with the amount of work I had gotten done to go do stream prep, I, it was it was awfully late, and I knew I was awfully tired, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get like 10 minutes into this and be like, I need to go to bed, so I'm like, let's just, let's just give up, and we'll... We'll try to go to bed now. And even then I still didn't fall asleep till like seven. Maybe six thirty. But hopefully tonight. We'll be able to uh, get some some sort of sleep. I'd actually gotten about three hours of sleep, and I was contemplating just staying up and uh, and starting the stream early. But then I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. It's going to hamper me getting stuff done later. So I ended up laying back down. And uh, I did fall back asleep. Right, so I don't know if we're going to need to fluff more blue to uh, finish the section out. I don't think we will. But then again. Maybe we will.
and I need to try to get as much stream prep done as I can tonight because tomorrow um, WoW's going to be down for an extended maintenance for the patch they're doing and on top of that like they already made the announcement that it was going to be extended which is what I kind of figured I figured it would happen last minute though but they are actually planning for it being extended um, but we're also supposed to have um, a chance for severe storms tomorrow night so I'm like oh, that's gonna put a damper on stream prep have to see how that goes. At least the shamans picked up the pace a little bit compared to what they were last time. So we got that going for us. I'm like looking at the fluff I have next to me in the bag and I'm looking at how this is covering. And I'm just kind of like, mm, we might need more. Because I feel like we're going to need a fairly good amount of the blue on here. Just because, you know, of the yellow underneath and stuff. But we'll, we'll see. I actually need to find a piece of cardboard to um to do the yarn fluff video or at least get it recorded when i start to have a moment to work on that all right like part of me doesn't want to work on that until we get the other video sorted Sorry if it seems a little dark. Let me know. The, the yellow is such a bright color. Or this golden yellow. Um, that I was sort of afraid if we turned the light directly onto what we were doing, it would just kind of blow everything out. And the glare would be a bit much. Like, it feels dark in our room to me. It's it's not, but it feels like it. Alright, so we've been going for about an hour. Sorry we got off to a slightly slow start. We always do on the first project day. As we are trying to plot out what we're doing. stuff sorted. I've got videos I need to make public over on YouTube that we've exported this week. It feels weird because I didn't have a park attack day. And so my my whole my whole um exporting schedule and stuff's changed over there now. I'm just all out of sorts getting used to our new schedule. And we probably won't go super late today because I think our friend is off from work. And I think that they uh, might be waiting on me to be able to go do something. I think. I'm not sure. I don't know if they had plans. I forgot to ask. Did you have plans with Tyler today? 
Uh, if so, they're not going to be until after he's done working. Oh, I thought he was off on Monday now. Uh, I'm not sure if that's already taken effect. Oh, okay. Wasn't sure. Walmart's been known to fuck with his schedule even when he tells them he has class and stuff, but I think he starts class this week for fall semester. Kind of glad we didn't need to venture down to Fayetteville this weekend because college kids are back and they were moving back in over the weekend. I can only imagine how traffic was down there. I mean, I'm sure some of the kids just stay year round, the ones that like got jobs and have apartments and stuff. I'm sure the dorm kids go home. But, uh, traffic down there is a nightmare on a good day. I mean, there's a light down there by the university, but... Some people around here seem to think traffic lights are suggestions, so... You still have to... Be on your toes and paying attention. They also seem to think merge lanes are a suggestion. And don't believe the merge signs when they tell you that you need to merge and the lane's about to end. And they don't even attempt to merge until the lane forces them into the traffic to their side. I don't know if they're just not seeing the signs or or what but my friend that semi probably doesn't know what you're doing and they probably don't care if they even see you because um, there's the interstate goes right through the middle of Fayetteville or maybe on the edge of it Maybe like a quarter of the way into the city. I'm not really sure 100% where the city limits start, but it's like, come on now. It is not a suggestion to merge, that lane is going away. Yeah, it's very green on the back. It's kind of funny. Just the way that the, the yellow from the felt and the um, blue from our our uh, yarn is mixing together back there. All right, it's hard because I feel like this is lumpy, but it's really this because of all of the the fiber that's been added to it over this past year. I don't think I'll be able to get rid of the lumpiness per se, but I might take a um, an exacto blade and just try to scrape up some of this coloration. See what's actually attached and what's not. Alright, so if we start tagging you down in here. I kind of need to figure out what on earth I am doing for dinner tonight. I took something out of the freezer, but... Like, I know I'm having cow, I just, like, moo cow, not cow the cat, um, but I don't know 
what I'm doing with it yet. Do I want rice? Do I want mashed potatoes? Do what do I want to do with veggies? Do I want to try to turn it into a sandwich? Like I don't know. I don't think we really have any rolls or anything that I'm all that particularly keen on in the house at the moment. So I kind of have to figure out what we're going to do with that. This is a good thing to do while you're watching something else. While you've got like a movie playing in the background or, or a podcast or something, music. And you can just kind of zone out while you're stabbing your needle through your felt and your fiber. Getting everybody all nice and attached here. And you can kind of tell if it's attached or not. I can see that that's fuzzy and moving and it doesn't look like it's been flattened at all. Now if you want to go for like a 3D effect you could probably just like tap down the sides and leave the middle um, untouched if that's an effect that you want to go for. But that is entirely up to you. Alright. I'll grab some more fluffy stuff. And continue fluffing away here. Just kind of feels, it doesn't quite feel like cotton candy, but it kind of looks like cotton candy, just kind of melting in on itself. If you don't really have it anchored down just because of the way the fibers all pull in together. not to go too fast either because the faster I go the more um, the monitor will shake and then the camera will start to shake so try not to go too zealously at it but I've seen on playback where it gets a little wobbly sometimes if I don't have the camera fully fully tucked in there So do try to be mindful of that. Alright. Although well, sometimes you'll hit a crunchy spot in the mat. Or an extra um like, you can hear it being extra crunchy just because of how much um, stuff we have in the mat and what's in the mat itself, like what makes up the middle of it and all the fiber that we have added to it, I imagine. 
So you'll hit sections where the map feels a little different in texture sometimes. You'll you'll pick it up as you as you go. And it's like, oh, that's a little bit more resistant there. I'm still pretty happy with this mat. If it was the foam, I don't think I would have been able to do this just because of the scratchiness. And the foam's gonna break down over time. I mean, this one might get to the point where it's too lumpy where I can't use it or something, or, you know, it might start to come apart eventually, but um, I think if we'd been using foam, we would have already had to replace it like two or three times, so. I'm perfectly fine with this mat, and I think this mat was 19... 99 on uh, the drevel eated the drevel eated the drevel the dreaded oh words I need some more caffeine the dreaded evil Amazon that I know a lot of people hate um, making purchases from but they had what I need I had what I needed at the time. So that's who we went with. It's still better than Hobby Lobby. In my opinion. Although I don't even know if Hobby Lobby had what I was looking for. Anyhow, I don't think they did. I know Joann's on their website has a little bit of stuff, but it's like different types of needles, and that needle might be spring-loaded. Or the handle it was in. Like, I saw somebody using a needle that looked like it was one of the ones from there. I could be wrong, though. And it was just making this god-awful clicking noise in the um, handle and I'm like oh no why why is that doing that um maybe it was just the brand of the handle but this one's a simple manual handle I guess doesn't retract or anything like you can physically take it apart and you can store the needle in the handle itself in the barrel so, you know, you don't have that sharp object out to get anybody. Alright, so, so, since we are getting towards this edge here, I'm going to flip this guy upside down. while we start to work on this edge here. as best as we can. Sorry, I have to keep an eye on my box of yarn. Um, I hadn't even opened the box yet and Ed found it sitting on the bed. And I don't know why Little didn't spaz out at him but he had jumped up on the bed and got onto the top of the box and was just sitting there. And I'm like, no, no. I actually thought he was going to start tearing into it, but he hadn't yet. So I need to go and get an extra empty kitty litter container and make sure all the dust is out of it and see if we still have a lid for it and try to shove the yarn into it. 
So these balls that I just picked up, they're they're smaller than the other stuff. Um, if the measurements were right, it looked like it was about 80 yards smaller. And we were thinking that's probably okay because I still have quite a lot of yarn in the other balls. Like I've barely made a noticeable dent in any of them. I think black might be the one that we've used the most on so far. So we're like, well, that might not be so bad. And the price was really, really, really good. Under um, three dollars a uh, a ball, so pretty pretty okay with that. All right, so here's where it starts to get a little tricky. So we get up here on. edge so our top edge is probably going to get a little wobbly but most of the time that top edge is probably going to be covered in a frame or not and I'm sorry I'm not framing this stuff on the the shop. I'm afraid that the glass is going to break in transit if I could even get it to fit in the glass. And then, you know, I want you guys to pick out whatever frame is going to fit your space the best. Like, I want you guys to use your imagination. Because if you see a, a frame that you don't like on something, then you'll probably be like, oh, but I hate the frame. And I don't want to charge for the frame if you're going to hate it and not use it, so. to work on getting this tapped in here. Like I said, the top edge is a always a little a little wonky, especially if you don't have that buffer. So I would have preferred to have a little bit of a buffer up here just to make it easier to deal with. But then we definitely, if I had put that purposely in, it would have been like seven and a half inches by 10-ish. We'd be nowhere near the 8. happened to think, and I probably should have thought about this beforehand, I didn't know if he had this in like a, a landscape orientation or a portrait orientation. Um, I'm not sure looking at it. I think he uses 18 by 24, so it might be in actually a portrait orientation, but I mean that's fine. That doesn't really matter all that much for us, I was just kind of curious. Because I'm... 
fuzz here. Coming up off the mat, that's fine. I'll just We'll just peel that off and I'll tuck that in my little trash bin there. Okay, we're gonna get, yeah, I might have to make some more blue fluff. I won't be surprised if I do. Okay. Worked in here. Now I might come back and do another pass along this edge. Just to clean up that edge a bit. So excited we got the other colors. I can't wait to get fluffing them. I'm gonna have to because um, you know the the week time wise has not been good so far, but um, maybe if it does end up storming tomorrow I can sit here and work on getting that done so I'm not just sitting here staring off into the depths of of YouTube and whatnot. I need to remember to start scheduling stuff more on Twitter. But then sometimes I forget that I've scheduled it. And so if something changes, I forget that I need to go back and, and edit it. Wow, it sounds like my mom's actually cooking dinner. I'm kind of surprised. Lately she's been just like microwaving stuff. All right, I know it looks like I'm going over the same exact spot. I'm not. There's a couple little pieces in there that I keep not hitting when I'm trying to. Alright. So, let's get this guy cleaned up here. Right, so let's take a look at how we're, we're doing here on this top edge. Not bad. I think I am going to come back in just with one more pass over that. Once um, we start to get everybody else settled and sorted. So I'm going to flip him back around here. And come back and keep going. Sometimes it's easier just to work in the smaller pieces. I know it takes a little bit longer to uh, get through. Sometimes it just works out better that way. So just trying to be a little extra careful on this top edge to make sure we're going through the edge of the felt. Because there were a few times on the other one, the last one that we did, where 
I was just felting directly into the mat. We weren't even touching the uh, the felt base, and I didn't realize it until I pulled it up off the mat, and a portion of it stayed. And I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> what just happened here?" And then the the dawning realization of, oh, that's what we did. So and I'm just kind of trying to use the protected fingers at times just to try to get that laying down, or at least so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm not sure how often you technically need to replace these needles, and maybe if it stops going through, or, you know, I mean, obviously if it breaks, that's one clue that, hey, you need to change your needle. But, um, this is only the second needle that, um, we've used so far out of that toolkit. So, pretty happy with, um, with needle wear. I'm sure, like, if your needle's, like, grossly, grotesquely bent, you're, you probably want to switch it to a non-bent one. Apparently, if you try to make sure you go straight in, it, um, prevents the needle from bending quite so much. So, you do want to try to go straight in, up and down. Sometimes I'm going in at an angle, though, just to for circumstances, or if you're trying to do like a specific like 3D puffiness, then I think you'd want to go in at a slight angle around the edge of your fluff. But general rule of thumb, from what I've seen, is people saying you want to try to go straight up and down just to prevent that from being an issue All right. so this is starting to get a little bit of a mind of its own probably because we didn't get this section in here and we've got some some thin sections up in there, so. Let's see, let's grab a piece here. I do have a fan on, so if you see the fluff start floating away, it's probably what that's all about. All right, so let's start to fill in this gabby guy. I mean, you see a little bit of the fluff from the back poking out the edge there, right in here. It's from the back of it. That, that's fine. It'll end up laying flat as time goes on. And we start adding more layers and we start, you know, just smoothing out the back a bit more as we go. So far from everything I've seen, that's pretty par for the course, or at least the way that I've been doing it. It's been consistent. So I think that's just how it is, at least when you're first getting started with a new painting. At least there is one good thing I've found to us not streaming early in the day or at least early on Saturdays. We don't have to worry about the parade for clothesline fair. 
because that makes quite a ruckus. Um, they've got the high school band performing, and then they've got all of these emergency vehicles from from the neighboring towns in there. Um, all going like full throttle. With the sirens and, and all of it. And I'm sure the kids get a kick out of it, but... I could probably do without. The cats are probably gonna flip their shit. The dogs aren't too fond of it either. Like, Zuzu can tell that there's something going on outside and he'll keep, like, going to look out the door. But when we've taken him out there in the past, he won't just sit down on the porch. He sees there's people across the street and he's like, I want to go see the people. Or he starts whining about wanting to go back inside and so we'll take him back inside and then he's getting mad about wanting to be outside. I'm like, you need to make up your mind, sir. I'm thinking we'll probably have to do at least one more pass across the top edge just to kind of get all of our our different sets of colors or well not colors but our different shapes of the color kind of all merged into one cohesive layer here. I mean, we'll see how this goes. Maybe I should have just worked from top to, to horizon line. Like the normal way I had been doing it before. We'll see. I mean, we should be able to to deal with any weirdness. It'll just take a few extra layers and whatnot. up start to just kind of work this down in see like down in here is starting to lay flatter already it's so funny how green that is on the back all right next bit of fluff I see like in here that we've definitely got a distinctive line in between the two, so. That I'm not too keen about, but. We'll get it figured out. So I do think when we go back over all of our our gaps and our thin spots here, we're going to start here and work this way. Just to, because I can see like the felt pulling a little bit as we're working down here from up here. So I just want to work down. But so far, coverage with this color is not too bad. I already know we're going to have to come back and do another pass by on this top edge, so not too terribly worried about that at the moment.
just filling in this bigger gap here that hadn't gotten any color yet. Oh, we're trying to. Trying to would probably definitely be the better word there. So for my wild challenges, friends, the seventh anniversary show is coming up on August 27th. Um, so if you have any fond memories from either playing the challenges or from the podcast itself, anything challenge related from the last seven years, feel free to send that in to the wild challenges. What, what the hell is it? Is it podcast at wildchallenges.com? I can't remember. The the email's on the website. I never remember the order that it goes in. But you can send it in to the show's email, which, again, on the website. Um, or Twitter, or Facebook, or Discord even. Just you can Discord one of the mobs and... Mobs? Mobs! Yes, mobs. Discord one of the mods. And, um let them know it's for the anniversary show and we'll make sure it gets to Lita. I'm trying to have that sent in um, by the, the 25th if at all possible if you're gonna send something in just so that um, things can get organized for the show and also doing the the Strike a Pose Challenger Fashion Show. Um, there's no prize or anything that I'm aware of this time out. It's just something fun to send in um, whatever your whatever your character's favorite outfit is that they've picked up. Um, no transmogging, so if you're a green or a bloodthirsty you have you can't transmog um has to be gear that you've picked up in your travels whether it drops or auction house and just make sure that it doesn't um break the gear rules of your challenge so if you're an iron man don't be putting on green gear for this um, all the details are on the website um there's a blog post about it Which, now that I'm thinking about it, I need to go back and make sure that I linked back to the blog post. Because now I have a sinking feeling I didn't. But it could just be that I'm not remembering that I did. Because I remembered linking a couple of things, but... Not real sure that was one of them. I'm going to have to double check. Ooh, ow, ow, ow. Sorry, I felt like something bit me. Or was stabbing me. Alright. Stick you on the side of the pad here. Okay. So yeah, I mean the back will always be a little funky looking because that's just how that oh I'm kicking my keyboard tray it's just how that goes and I know it looks a little a little messy at the moment but have patience we're getting it to where it needs to be I said it's it's a bit of a slow project. Definitely not something that's gonna be done in a day unless you are super faster than me. 
Which, hey, if you are cool, cool. And depending on what you're doing as well and how involved in what the scene is and everything, that'll probably also determine um, how long it's going to take you to uh, get through a section to get it done. Now if we had gone smaller we probably would have been done with Sky already, but Bob does his stuff so big as it is. I mean, 18 by 24 is a good size. I mean, even compared to like the 11 by 14 painting that we did with the flamingo, that would sit inside of it. Like, it would dwarf it. There'd be plenty of room around the outside edge. Right, because usually, usually the standard larger size is 16 by 20, and he's doing 18 by 24, so he's going pretty good size, and I think he went those sizes because of the brushes, since the brushes were so big, um, you needed a surface that wouldn't fight you and um, would be more accommodating to a brush of that size. Because, I mean, he wouldn't really be able to do that. Plus, I think the 18 by 24 probably also played well um, on the TV screens since it was bigger. But because he goes so big, when you try to scale it down, it just doesn't feel like it does it justice. Not at all. Which is why I always felt so bad and was so nervous doing the, the 4x4. Um, paint-alongs with him because it's like there was going that small it was just like wow like I don't like I want to to do this right but at the same time I don't really have all that much room to maneuver I know it's a little funny at this angle but bear with me pretend we're doing the water first. Pretend we're doing the bottom half first, that's all. We're not, it's actually the sky, but pretend. We need to use our imagination. sorted up here. So don't forget to follow on the socials. The link should be down below somewhere. Um, we've got the Kofi link for those that don't want to donate through YouTube. You can donate through PayPal on Kofi. I'm not set up for Stripe because I wasn't sure what all was going to be involved with that, um, but I am set up for PayPal on Kofi. And, um, I realized that some of the gallery was a little weird because I had moved some stuff around, so I was trying to fix that last night. 
and um, working on getting that posted. We've got some of our stuff posted to Instagram. Not all of it, because I haven't been on Insta all that long. And I'm not on there posting selfies or anything like that. I'm just posting um, the art stuff that we've done. There's the YouTube channel where the live streams get archived. Most of the live streams get archived, put it that way. Providing there wasn't any problems during the live stream. Like, I just don't have time to edit down the last Planet Zoo stream, so I think I'm just gonna let it roll as it is and just put a disclaimer that the audio fucked up. And I didn't know it. But at least the audio is okay today, it seems. So we got that going for us today. And then we have the Etsy shop as well. There is stuff up on the Etsy shop right now. Um, we've got some of the remaining Bob Ross magnets that we painted following some of his tutorials. We actually did those live on stream. Um, I don't think the that those live streams are archived because for a while I hadn't been archiving them over but um, we're not running uh, music or anything so we should be appeasing the YouTube gods and the Twitch gods at the same time. So stuff I'm trying to make sure that we get archived over there now when possible. Um, yeah, and we have Twitter. Like, I don't really have a website, but I guess my website would be the Etsy store, I suppose. I still have to go back and change the banner. See, I've got this list of stuff that I haven't done. It needs to get done. I'm sure I'm missing emote slots. And sorry we don't do anything with the channel points here. I'm totally unimaginative and uncreative and I don't have time to figure that out. I'm sure we could do something with them, but I don't know what. I feel like if I did channel point stuff, we'd never get anything done. I would keep getting distracted and sidetracked. <laughs> Our very simple channel over here. We don't have all the, the bells and the whistles and the little side games or anything. At least not right now. Okay. So we're getting closer to having the first run layer of the sky tapped in here. Like right in here, it did come off the edge of the mat just a little bit, or the felt. I'm 
but um, it's okay because it didn't rip off when we peeled the uh, <laughs> when we peeled the felt base up. So so that's good. All we can really hope for there, I suppose. So I'll just keep on tapping this section in. So yeah, I mean we do have a little bit of yellow on the edge here. I'm trying to poke on through, but that's okay because the next pass that we do We'll work on getting all of that tidied up. So right now I just want to work on making sure that our base coloration is down and good to go. that was. I right, got a little bit of fuzz I think from the stuff on the mat got pulled into there. Okay. So this one we're gonna try to get into the very edge. as best as we can. I also have to be careful how hard I'm, or how much I'm bouncing the needle, because sometimes that upsets my neck, so. That's because my neck is fucked up, so. <laughs> That's all. I mean, if you have a normal, a normal non-fucked up neck, it probably won't be quite as jarring to you. I do tend to go a little bit slower for a couple of different reasons. Alright. So we've almost got our first pass done with this color. I'm going to fill in this gap here right above where I'm working at the moment and then we'll, we'll start to not put, point the needle at us directly. Try to remember our safety rules. Don't point the sharp object at you. And I keep trying to line this up, silly, silly me. All right, I'm just trying to get this tapped in along our edge here, along our pen line. Just so I don't get too wild and crazy here. And get too uh, wiggly. And we're trying to keep it somewhat to uh, to our lined out approximate measurements. 
as best as we can. Okay. So we do have this little yappy guy there. That's fine. We're not going to leave him like that. We're going to come back in and get him sorted. So, whoop, don't want my little trash can to fall over. Okay, so now it's going to get this worked in here and this is where we're going to start to come back in and work on getting all of our thinner sections and gaps sorted out where needed. Oh, right. I tell you, it must be hot because I am it is warm here, yes. melting. It is 96 outside with a feels like of 104. Yep. I, it totally feels like it. 100%. Oh, we have some showers popping. Were we supposed to get showers tonight? Did they change it? Uh, th your mom said that they were supposed to have some tonight. Or at least there's a chance. So we'll have a cold front soon. Yeah, I, I see... Um, Tomorrow they're saying PM thunderstorms. Looks like just a 15% chance of stuff for us today. So it looks like Tuesday and Wednesday we've got thunderstorm chances. And then next weekend, holy shit, we've got a whole week of thunderstorm chances. Really? Well, well Saturday, week? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, so a whole week. Gotcha. Yeah. Do I need to get him? Nope. Come on, buddy. Sorry. Um, does child outside need food? Nope. They have food in our kitchen. Okay. I'm not referring to a real kid. I'm referring to our outdoor cat. And by our our outdoor cat, we mean the outdoor cat that showed up on our doorstep and we've inherited. That he's decided he's living here. He's a freeloader. He just showed up one day, meowing and hungry, and ate the cat food that we have out for the other cat, chased the other cat out of this area. And has just all sorts of taken over. He's such a brat. He will... He will walk up. Now, I have... We have a couple of windows that don't open for some reason. We don't know if they were nailed shut or if they're just that disastrously painted shut. I don't fucking know. But they won't fucking open. 
we've tried. And the glass is really thin, so we have to be careful how hard we try. Um, ideally, they should get replaced, but no money for that. There's other things taking much more precedence. Um, and uh, he will, the screens are on the outside of the window. And it's like a screen that goes top to bottom. These are old windows. And um, he will climb or he'll stretch and put his feet on the screen and then he'll start ripping his nails into the screen to get our attention to come out there because he wants cuddles. And I'm, or he wants food. He wants something. He wants us outside. Pronto. He did that to our screen door the other night and scared the fucking shit out of me. It was like 5.30 in the morning. I thought somebody was fucking with our front door. And it was just me in our room. Because Russell was in the other room. And I'm like, oh god, what is happening? And I was afraid to pull back the curtain to check because I thought I was going to see a person standing there. And then I hear, meow. I'm like, fucking really? Meow. I'm like, dude, I'm not coming outside. I was in bed. I was comfy for a change, which is hard to make happen a lot of the times with my neck being pissy so much. I was like, no. No. Alright, so I don't know. Do we just want to... Maybe we'll just like go over in chunks instead. It might be a little bit easier to to sort out here. So this is where we're going to take a little bit more time making sure everything's tapped in. But yeah, now our biggest problem is we need to start thinking about um, dealing with his ass and, and the cold temperatures so we're going to have to um, about getting a couple of boxes and some straw. I don't know if he'll go in them because I don't know if he'll feel cornered but if we put it on the porch he might. We'll at least put the option there if, if he's too stubborn to use it then that's gonna be on him. We don't really have the money to do like the, the insulated cooler box, so we might just have to make do with two um, cardboard boxes with some straw stuffed in between them and then some straw in the main box. I'm actually thinking we might need to save the box that my yarn came in. We might be able to make that fit inside of a puppy pad box. And I don't think straw will be that expensive. We can probably pick that up at Tractor Supply. Even if this box doesn't fit entirely into the other one, um, we might be able to do something with it. I mean, we can always buy two cardboard boxes at Lowe's if it comes to it. But, um, I'd rather not buy a cardboard box if we don't have to. I mean, if we have one, I should probably try to use it. I would try to make something out of the kitty litter buckets that we have, since we have a ton of them, but that's gonna be all sorts of a trial. And the plastic will probably just break anyway.
don't really have anything to waterproof it. But if we put it on the porch and we put it under our one bench, I think that would probably protect it enough because that section doesn't normally get wet. Maybe we can put one of our outdoor mats under it just so it's not touching the wood directly of the porch. We'll, we'll figure it out. We just have to actually do it. Still a little early yet. And um, I have a feeling we're going to end up with way more straw than we necessarily wanted. But... I guess we'll see how it goes. filling in pretty pretty nicely in there I think so far we still have a ways to go to do our next pass to make sure all of our little you okay? Mm -hmm. alright sure all of our little gappy things are filled in pretty good. <laughs> fuzz. Fuzz attached to the face. The fan is running and it's like cat hair flying. So the main reason I'm coming back and doing this is because we just did a quick pass just to get that base color in. And I knew there was going to be gaps that were going to show up anyway. So now this is our time to come back in. I mean we could have just done it um, slower and made sure that we didn't have the gaps as we were going, but even when I've tried to do that, I've seen some gaps show up as we go. So just trying a little something different this time. Just to see what happens more or less. That is going pretty good. I mean, one of our new yarn colors would have been really bright and brilliant for the sky. And I was originally thinking of using that, but it didn't come in time for me to fluff, so that's okay. This will do the job. That needs doing. Okay, again, I'm just doing this to try to flatten out the back and unscrunch some of the 
the felt base here. And then it also lets me see if I had any other spots open up that I need to deal with. So far, I think we're doing pretty okay. Just trying to be a little bit more careful with our edge here. Make sure that you don't get too far away from our line. Alright, so I just have my finger gently sitting on top. I'm not putting hardly any pressure on this, it's just so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. Make sure that we're getting all nice and filled in. Now it's gonna appear like we keep putting fluff over the same sections and we do a little bit just because I'm trying to um, overlap the top layers a teeny bit just so we don't have any weird um, lines where we're joining the new layer on top of the old layer just so it looks a little more um, all one pass. I mean, we're gonna have our our trees and our shrubbery and stuff sitting on top of this a good amount, but since I don't yet know where all of it's gonna sit, I would just rather do this right the first time before we start bringing in those things and realize, oh, we should have added more. It's just easier to make it right the first time through. Then to come back in later. And uh, try to fix it when there's already other stuff on top of it. sure if I had a piece of fluff fall. Well, I've had that, the fluff just stick to my shirt and I'm walking around with it. It was a piece I thought I had on the table and I went to get it and I couldn't find it so I thought I used it. And uh, wrapped up for the day. Um was out in the kitchen starting dinner and I was like oh I need to go to the bathroom real quick I went to the bathroom and saw this dark thing on my shirt nearly had a conniption fit because I thought there was this huge ass bug on me and bugs and I don't get along at all and just nearly had a full on meltdown before I realized it was a piece of fluff from from the art stream that had somehow managed to uh, get away. I was like, damn, my art supplies are trying to give me a nervous breakdown, what the hell? Alright, so we've got some gaps in here that we need to fill in here next. 
I'm just anchoring that end just a teeny tiny bit. I barely stabbed it through, so. Shouldn't really be. on there too tight. Yeah, see that came up. That's fine. I was expecting it to. Alright, and then we'll just keep filling in wherever it looks like we've got our base color from the mat, color of the mat shining through. And some of those spots might be a little bit harder to see on the camera than others, because some of them are a little more subtle, but I can see them. so. I mean, this one's probably coming up a bit. So, I mean, yeah, you can see some sections. I do have a little bit of a line here that forms. I'm going to drop that section of fluff down in there, but I don't think it'll be too bad. Okay, it's a little noticeable, but not terrible. Alright, this. guys section filled in and I'll probably take another pass or two, since we're slowly overlapping. And I mean, if you wanted to do clouds, I'm sure, you know, that's fine. make your sky whatever you want it to be, I suppose. Just remember that we're probably going to have a fair amount of tree covering this. So, um, adjust accordingly. All that brown um, uh, fluff there, or that dark navy, whatever color that was, is just kind of taken over. Alright, so. And I do have, I do want to put a little piece in there, but before I do that, I want to finish up getting our edge here. And dealt with a bit. 
Sorry, I know when I put my hand over, it kind of blocks what we're doing. I try not to do that too much. But sometimes when I'm not paying attention, I do end up doing it. Okay. So if you guys are working on any art projects or anything, I'd love to see what other people are doing. So feel free to tag me on Twitter. I think you can tag me on Instagram. I don't know if you can or not, but if you can, feel free to tag me there too. But I'm on Twitter more than I am on Instagram. finished off. Didn't think it was that big of a section, but looks like it might have been. Alright. Well, the back's starting to turn a little bit more shades of blue, but it kind of still feels like a sea foamy shade happening back here. But that's okay. This is the back side. The back side of Sky. And that's more than fine. Sorry, I'm looking at uh, all the little snags there for me stabbing this through. This particular piece of felt is a little bit thinner. Whoop! Fluff! Behave. Oh, crab down! Crab down! Sorry. One of the crabs was climbing something and they fell and their shell went clink on the uh, side of the tank. We don't have a crab cam right now. Maybe someday we will. Something that we've talked about. I was kind of hoping to have the 50 gallon tank um, up and running before we did that though. That's one thing that we would like to do. some point at least. We will see what happens with that. I mean, watching them is not any less boring than uh, 
watching me do this, so a lot of times they're just sitting there. Up in their tree. Occasionally they'll go on the move. I feel like we might need a two camera setup for that and do a split screen. Maybe a camera over on the water bowls and then a camera where they all like to hang out. Definitely something that we'd have to have the fundage to uh, set up with that, especially if we do the 50 gal. So yeah, I mean you can see where we've filled in the front, it's filling in on the back as well, there's not as many like gaps and stuff. front edge was still a little lacking down here, but I think, I think we're okay for the most part. What time is it? Oh, we got a little bit of a late start today. I've really got to get started sooner. But that needs to coincide with my insomnia behaving. Maybe not my insomnia, just my ability to fall asleep sooner. section filled in here because we had a bit of a, a gappy guy it wasn't really being a problem it's just he was there we did need to sort him I'll see a little bit of this yellow edge, so I might actually attempt one more pass on this front edge here. Fuzz. Alright, that looks pretty good in there. Like, there's a little section right in here I kind of want to fill in, but let's see about. dealing with this edge a little bit more first. At least as best as we can. 
And I'm coming in at an angle just to try to get that filled in. And hopefully we're actually in the felt base. I feel like we are. Yeah, we were. Okay. Now we have that one little spot there that we need to kind of fluff in here. Where we had that weird fill-in section. What's wrong? Well, nothing. Like, really nothing. Okay. My mom was knocking, so I didn't know if something was going on or what. But we will probably be stopping here soon today because time is drifting onwards and I have a shit ton of stuff I still need to get to tonight. So we'll probably still be working on filling in our gaps and stuff um, next week. I doubt the entirety of next Sunday's art stream will be um, re-patching the blue, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure we'll start to move on to the brown either late into the stream next Sunday or um, Monday at the latest. But yeah, it's definitely taking shape. And we are getting there. It always starts off a bit slower when we're putting in our our background and stuff but yeah I mean we can see we're we're filling in our our yellow gaps pretty good and so I mean we're, we're about to hear where we've done our second pass so far so I mean you can definitely see the difference in that and um, yeah so I'm excited this is looking pretty good so far um, so I thank you guys for hanging out with me today. And um, the rest of the week, so what's today? Today's Monday, so no stream tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, Thursday we'll be working on some bloodthirsty leveling. This week, um, Friday will be Planet Zoo. Nothing on Saturday because I'll be busy dealing with stuff for the Wild Challenges podcast. And then Sunday, we'll be picking up again with this bad boy. And, um, and the same for Monday. We'll be, I'm not going to work in between two different projects at the same time. Um, I think we'll just keep flowing with one and um, until we get it finished, and then we'll pop into the next thing. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, it's good to be back with our fluffy stuff once again, and uh, I'll probably fluff a little bit more blue. Maybe I'll make the video on that. I don't know. We'll see. But um, thank you again. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you all on Thursday. So until we are together again, have a good one, guys.